The word has been used to, uh, in an improper fashion, like uh, the legal definition of an occupation includes the surrounding of a country or an area by military force. But when you went beyond as to what she actually said under oath, uh, there were numerous uh, contradictions. Robert Krejcik reporting for Rebel News here in Ottawa, Ontario on the 17th day of the trial of Tamara Leach and Chris Barber. The two co-defendants are being charged with a series of crimes. Mischief, intimidation, obstruction of police and counseling others towards those three crimes. Mischief, intimidation and obstruction of police with respect to their roles as organizers with the Freedom Convoy in 2022 a peaceful demonstration against what I describe as the COVID-19 enterprise, an apparatus of control, surveillance, censorship mandates. You all know the rest of that story. Today's proceedings were consumed with dealings with the latest witnesses from the prosecution. It's a series of auto residents testifying to what they say were harms and damages that they suffered as a function of the Freedom Convoy. If you folks value our coverage, if you appreciate our reporting here in the field that you cannot see anywhere else, please understand that we need your financial support to continue delivering this content. Stay up to date with our reports at TamaraTrial.com. The primary witness today for the prosecution is a lady named Zexi Lee. She is an Ottawa resident. She is a government employee. And she's also somewhat of a celebrity and activist witness. What do I mean when I use those terms? She's a celebrity in the sense that she was a primary force in pursuit of securing an injunction against honking in the parts of downtown where the Freedom Convoy was present. And she received fawning news media coverage for that. She also testified at the POEC, the Public Order Emergency Commission, which examined ostensibly Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's invocation of the Emergencies Act, which was previously known as the War Measures Act, in his attempts to shut down this demonstration. Now, Zexi Lee, she came into the courtroom escorted by two local police officers. She had two cops with her ostensibly because she is under threat. She is in need of this sort of special security. Zexi Lee repeatedly used the term occupation and derivatives like occupied in her testimony when she was describing the Freedom Convoy. Now, why is this important? There was a moment where Diane Magus, the defense attorney representing Chris Barber, raised an objection to Zexi Lee's repeated invocation of that term. And the reason it's important is because that term has a martial and military context to it. It relates to international humanitarian law, which governs military control of territories that belong to another sovereign state. And this lays a sort of military martial pretext to the demonstration. We actually got to speak with Diane Magus about that specific objection, and we'll show you that right now. Zexi Lee regularly used that term occupation and occupied in reference to the Freedom Convoy, the status quo of the demonstration. You raise an objection. I want you to tell us what's objectionable, ugh, what's objectionable, what's problematic with the usage of that term in reference to the Freedom Convoy. In my view, and that's my opinion, the word has been used to, uh, in an improper fashion, like the legal definition of an occupation includes the surrounding of a country or an area by military force. Uh, we know around the world right now there are different occupations around the world, so it's it's a bit insulting to uh, and insensitive to the people that are living through an occupation. That is, is actually my point. Both witnesses today for the prosecution used the term occupation in describing the Freedom Convoy. That's also a theme that links to the previous witness that we saw in the last day's proceedings, which was this past Friday. That term occupation became popularized by elected officials, other authorities, and news media outlets that sought to characterize the Freedom Convoy in a certain way and coming from figures that were hostile towards the Freedom Convoy and all other critics of the COVID-19 enterprise. An Ottawa resident, also a government employee, testified to what he says was intimidation 
and threats and damage to his mental health that he and his partner endured as a function of the Freedom Convoy demonstration. He also said that he experienced food insecurity, being unable to get groceries somehow. He said that he was harassed and threatened for wearing a mask and that Freedom Convoy demonstrators and protesters encircled upon him and made him feel intimidated. We cried multiple times. That's an exact quote from this third witness who says that he and his partner were so distraught that they were crying because the honking, the noise was too loud and disturbing their abilities to sleep. When you were cross-examining Zexi Lee, you were yes. identifying contradictions between prior testimony and today's. Yes. And I'm just wondering how you think that went. Well, I, I think the uh, her testimony uh, on the surface was uh, genuine uh, as to how she felt about things. But when you went beyond as to what she actually said under oath, uh, there were numerous uh, contradictions. So that'll be something that the judge has to consider when looking at her credibility. When you were seeking to have the witnesses, these Ottawans, precluded from testifying, mm -hmm. now we're here we are. Several have already done their testimonies. Mm -hmm. How do you think that went relative to your initial request? Well, uh, the judge has ruled on my request. Uh, and the result of that ruling is that we have been listening to these residents uh, and most of them have not been specific in terms of time and place and even date uh, as to when they made various observations and the judge has uh, quite rightly in my view excluded their comments about feelings and impacts on their lives so um, the judge has done exactly what she said she would do. Dear Rebel News audience, if you value and appreciate this work in the field, we want to keep delivering it to you. We need your financial support to keep doing it. So help us out and keep up to date with our reports at TamaraTrial.com.